Hey everyone, I wanted to leave you in this final video with some words of encouragement and I wanted to share a little bit about my own story. 10, 10 years ago or so, I mean I started meditating about 12 years ago, but 10 years ago I was starting to get more serious about the path and uh, I was much like you, except I was probably even more full of nervous energy. I was just literally one of those people that couldn't sit still. I was into many things. I was into many ways to party. I was not comfortable being alone, let alone sitting still with myself in silence. I had a million excuses why I needed to run a million miles an hour all day long in a million different directions and be frazzled in the process. And I couldn't sit still for five minutes, let alone 10, let alone 15 or an hour or three hours or six hours as I did over Christmas last year uh, with, a, with a group of fellow practitioners. Um, all that stuff seemed very foreign to me. And to me, the act of cultivating a meditation habit or the, the journey, I should say, is a lot like the journey of running. You wouldn't run out your front door on the first day of marathon training, hopefully, unless you're like an ego-bound crazy person, and try to run 10 miles on the first day. You'd probably hurt yourself and then never go back to running and say, running's bad for me, I'm not a runner, I'm never gonna do that again. So I want you to not jump in too deeply to meditation at first and try to do 15 minutes or 20 minutes before you're really ready for it, only because you don't want to drive yourself crazy in those 15 minutes with the monkey mind, because it will get after you a little bit, and then try to talk yourself out of it the next day of like, wow, that totally didn't work, I'm not gonna do this, or, or just kind of phone it in the next time. It's really important to just kind of stair-step your way up to the consistent practice. And I want to share also a little story of Jerry Seinfeld. I don't know if you heard this story, but Jerry Seinfeld, when he, you know, after he sold uh, the syndication rights for the Seinfeld uh, franchise and you know made billions of dollars in the process, you know, people were asking what made him so successful over the years. And he said early on he realized that all he needed to do as a comedian to contribute great comedy to the world was to just create 15 minutes every single day. So he would dedicate 15 minutes a day throughout his entire life and career to writing jokes. And a lot of them were bad and a few of them were good and a few of them he kept on polishing into what became Seinfeld and his HBO specials and on and on and on. And he said it was very simple because once he formed that habit, his only job from that point forward was to not break the chain. Now think about this. Think about those 15 minute deposits he was making into the comedy gold mine. Think about those as links in the chain and his only job, his only mission on earth was no matter what, no matter how sick he was or traveling or whatever he was doing, no matter how famous he got, he would not break that chain that he started all those years ago. And look where it led him. I mean, that's the power of like compounding interest. That's the accrual of all these tiny little deposits we're making every single day that come back to you in just waves and showers of of love and good vibes and things. So I'm really hoping you can commit for yourself, not for me, literally for yourself, because this is the most powerful habit you could cultivate over your lifetime. This is why I'm so passionate about this. This is why I average on over, uh, I average over 350 hours of meditation a year. Uh, when, I, when I did the quick math on it, I, I try not to focus too much on the numbers anymore because as I may have said earlier, it's not about the results anymore. It's only about the effort. Uh, but 350 hours comes out to 14 and a half days per year. So when I think about the average year of my life, I'm spending sitting still 14 and a half days solid. It's crazy to me because like I said, 10 or 12 years ago, I couldn't sit still for five minutes and I didn't see any reason to. You know, and now I would, I crave to sit in meditation. Um, so I want to leave you with a little passage I share with all my meditation students. It's a passage that was written by Paramahansa Yogananda, who's the author of Autobiography of a Yogi. He's the guru uh, whose teachings I follow. And he wrote down all these teachings and uh, had them typed up by his disciples back in the 20s and 30s. And they became the typed, old school typed, handwritten lessons of self-realization fellowship. But in one of the first lessons, he shared this one paragraph that totally kicked my ass and made me dedicate a significant portion of my life to becoming a yogi. I'm not trying to draft you into becoming a yogi, by the way. I'm just trying to uh, help you see the value of the path and of making these little short-term commitments that add up ultimately to a nice long-term commitment. And here's what he said. And this passage is about what um, 
the term volition. Are you familiar with that word? Oh, I'm sorry, with that word, it's V-O-L-I-T-I-O-N, volition. So here's what he wrote. A wish implies a helpless desire of the mind. A desire is a stronger wish. It is often followed by fitful efforts to mani manifest itself into action. An intention or determination is a definite strong desire expressed very forcefully once or twice through action for the accomplishment of a certain purpose. Such a determination, however strong, is often discouraged after one or perhaps several unsuccessful efforts. But a volition consists of a series of continuous, undiscourageable, unceasing determinations and acts revolving around a desire until it becomes dynamic enough to produce the much craved result. Will and act until victory is the slogan of all volative activity. No, mat no matter how impossible of accomplishment a goal may seem, the man or woman of volition never stops repeating conscious acts of determination to achieve it as long as they live. I'd like to meditate on that for a second because it always kicks my ass. I've read it thousands of times to thousands of people and it still kicks my ass. And I think it, it does so because that's what we ultimately want out of all these programs. We want our lives to change. We want to change or be changed. We want to be different. And we have to be willing to change ourselves and to tweak and to optimize our habits if that's what we truly want. Because we know in our hearts that what they've been telling us is true. It does take getting back up again and again and again and again. I don't care if it's love or business or art, it all kicks your ass over and over and over again. That's how you learn. And I, I'm no different, but um, meditation has taught me that you can, ha you can harness a power inside yourself that has always been there to achieve what the guru calls that volition, or that volative state, volative activity right action. Choosing the right habits like meditation that tend to light up the other habits that we should pursue and the other right choices we should take throughout our day that lead us to better and better places. That's why meditation is so crucial and so powerful and such a fundamental in my own life. I know that if I make that choice to put in my time, the other choices that are inevitably going to follow, I'm more likely to choose the right one. So I want to leave you with that. And above all, over the next 30 days, I wish you luck. I wish you peace and enjoy it. Enjoy the journey. Thanks so much for sticking with me this far. I wish you nothing but happiness and success on your journey. And I look forward to working with you more this year.